Now, one of the reasons people like this vehicle is it's loaded with features. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. We are all looking for something that's luxurious, something that meets our family needs and will get us to point A to point B, but we want it with a little bit of style. So the 2020 Buick Encore GX is one of those options. Remember, this is just slightly larger than the Encore. If this is too big for you and you've taken it for a test drive, check out the regular Encore, which we've reviewed, and it's been out since like 2013. So they pretty much have that completely dialed in. But this is just a little larger, and there are larger vehicles because Buick has gone almost completely SUV. And this is part of that Buick design. We'll show you 10 different categories so you know before you go take it for a test drive, what's the performance, the handling, the visibility, the seating. We give you 10 categories, and at the end, we'll give you a value and a total. And it's really important that you know all these features before you get to the dealer, and you won't be wasting time, and you'll make really smart decisions. If this is your first time to the channel, we give you great information so you have car smarts. We cover all kinds of cars in all price ranges because knowledge is power. Make sure to hit that subscribe and that little bell so you don't miss anything. The 2020 Buick GX is a compact crossover. That means it gives you car ride, but the utility of an SUV. Now, one of the reasons people like this vehicle is it's loaded with features. Now, we are driving the top trim level, but you should always look at your price points. This is that $20,000 range. There's always promotions and incentives, so make sure you don't miss those. We cover those once a month. Now, one of the things you're going to look at is the fact this is a four-door vehicle that seats five people. It has pretty good storage. We'll cover all that, but first thing we're going to do is we're going to take it for a ride, show you the performance, Let's go for a ride. Under the hood are two engine options, a 1.2 liter or a 1.3 liter, little teeny engines. These are three cylinder engines that are both turbocharged, 137 horsepower on the 1.2 and 155 horsepower on the 1.3. Honestly, the 1.3 is worthwhile. The price difference is so little. If you want good fuel economy and still just enough horsepower to get in front of that other vehicle, this is the engine that you want. Fuel economy is really good in the 40s. When you buy a vehicle like the Encore GX, this is not a race car. Zero to 60 is not really even a qualifier. You're looking for something that's gonna give you good fuel economy, that has room to seat up to five, some storage space in back, something you can use every day. I hate to say this, a little more utilitarian than a little bit of luxury. Buick is one of the last mid-level brands. What do I mean? Well, you've got Honda Acura, Toyota Lexus, Ford Lincoln, Mercury's gone. And when you start looking at the mid-level being like Chevrolet Cadillac, Buick is that middle space, and there really aren't any people living in that space anymore. So Buick has an opportunity to captivate a new audience. And so they've done that when it comes to being more youthful, redesigned, but they did take away some of those little markers that make a Buick a Buick. Not just the logo, the three flags, but it's also the little three markers that used to be on the left and right side of the vehicle. It was just a style point, but I miss it. And we'll talk about that when it comes to design. When you're looking at performance, there are two engines, like I said, a smaller one and the bigger one, the 1.3 liter. They're both turbocharged, known as Ecotech motors. They are not about performance. They are about fuel economy. And you'll probably be driving it just like I'm driving it in stop and go traffic, going to the mall, going to grocery shopping, getting your kids or going to work, whatever it might be that your life brings. So what does that really mean? It means you need something that has enough get up and go at a traffic light, on an on-ramp, to give you enough performance to be comfortable, to feel safe, to feel confident. There's a lot of cars in this category. You're looking at the Mazda CX-30, which we have reviewed, and you can check that out up here, and some of the other competitors like the RAV4, which we'll talk about further along this review. So one of the things I've noticed is the performance is just a little bit more than enough. It's kind of disappointing. It just needs that little bit more, so maybe they could add a bigger boost onto the turbo, but you can't put too much on this engine. This is like the most you can get, and let me tell you, it doesn't want to be pushed this hard. This vehicle wants to be driven, but it doesn't want to accelerate heavily. And for that reason, I had to give it a six for performance. Now, handling is a different subject. We're looking at braking, we're looking at ride quality. For everyday ride, it's fine. It is nothing fancy. It is not a race car. It is not trying to be something that it's not. It's transportation, to be honest with you. But look at, I put my foot into this 
to get around this bad driver in front of me and it just has enough to get it going. It just needs that little bit more. Now we get into the corners here and you try to apply the power like you should, at least you do in a race car, and there's a ton of body roll. And you look at the competitors again, there's not as much body roll. With the body roll and the okay suspension ride, it is more luxurious than it is performance, and that's good because it is not a performance car in any way, shape, or form. And because it's a luxury, you're expecting a slightly nicer ride. And remember, five is average, so I had to give it a six for handling. Safety is a critical factor, whether you're driving a sedan, an SUV, a pickup truck, whatever it is, safety is an important factor. And there's a full suite of safety features that are on this GX. This is the Essence trim level, so it does have a lot of other things. And one of the things I think is safety is the LED lights. And there really are a lot of safety features involved. Now, when you upgrade, you can also get the blind spot detection, the cross traffic alert. There are buttons in the front for the lane change departure, really good safety feature. You've got the parking assist and all of the notifications. So they really did a good job on safety and I expected that from a GM product, so I gave it an eight. Visibility is the second most important feature when purchasing a vehicle. Number one is seating comfort because this is where you sit. We'll get to that next. But as far as visibility, here are the things that you need to know. Good, long, large windshield. That is really important. Besides the larger windshield, the sills are a little bit higher than I would expect. This is part of the design element, and we'll talk about that in a minute. It's not great for visibility. It looks awesome on the outside. But looking out the back, you've got a piece of glass that's good size and some side view mirrors that definitely help. And when you put the car in reverse, this vehicle, because it's loaded, has an around view camera as well as the ability to show the backup camera. And it, if you turn the wheel one way or the other, it goes with it. That is impressive. That is part of your visibility. And when you flip the switch, this rear view mirror becomes a camera. That is impressive. For visibility, I gave it a seven. When sitting in the front seat, it's pretty comfortable. It's built for multiple different size bodies. We're all built differently and that's great. So it's a little flatter and a little wider. The bolsters are not too bad. Pretty comfortable considering the material in this particular case is pleather or vinyl. But the seat has something that I really like, not just the forward and back and the ability to raise the seat up and down, which not every vehicle has. It has the ability to adjust the back of the seat in the driver's seat and it has two-way lumbar. But that's the driver's seat. Move over to the passenger seat, you have lumbar. Thank you, Buick. That is a luxury item that a lot of manufacturers miss and it has really moved the seat up and down and back and forth, but you cannot move the back of the seat unless you do it manually. Does that make a difference? Probably not, you'll set it once and just leave it, but it is a negative compared to other vehicles in this category, such as the RAV4 and the Hondas. You're looking at so many vehicles in this very busy category, you're looking at the Kia Seltos, the Hyundai Venue, I mean, it's really a very large category. Even as you shrink the vehicles down to the sub, sub, sub compacts, this is small. They make it even smaller on the regular Encore, but you lose things. So remember when you're looking at this price point, look at things that are comparable. Let's take a look at the second row. Now that we're in the back seat, there's a little less room, obviously. If you're taller than I am, I'm 5'8", there's a little bit more headroom. And as far as shoulder room and knee room, it's a little small. I sat in the passenger seat and adjusted the seat for me, and it still gives me very little room here between my knees and the back of the seat. By the way, there are pockets here, which I do appreciate. In the door, there's storage. There's a window lift, which is great. In the middle, where you could have a third person, it would be tight, is two cup holders and a nice armrest, nice soft materials. Do appreciate that, by the way. Going to the back of the center console, there is an electrical outlet that's a wall outlet, as well as a USB connection and... A USB-C connection, which is part of features, and I have to say that is very nice because a lot of things are charging on USB-C. Totally for seating comfort, considering the front seat has lumbar and some adjustability. The passenger seat has lumbar, but then you lost the ability to adjust the back of the seat and the not so comfortable second row. I had to give it a score of six. When you're looking at a luxury compact crossover like the Encore and like its competitors, and you're calling yourself luxury, you charge up for that luxury because some people just want the car they don't want all the extra goodies well in this case there is an advanced technology package it's about $1,790 but it does include an around view camera 
that is HD and it is really good. It has tons of adjustments. On top of that, you get the head up display. I'm not really a fan of these head up displays that are a piece of plastic and you can read the information. That's great, but it almost blocks some of your vision. I'd rather just have the information or don't offer it. You also get the adaptive cruise control and the Buick infotainment system. You do get an eight inch screen when it comes to technology. The problem is the processor is kind of slow. The rest of the information as far as the climate control is great. I love the fact that there's wireless charging and USB-C well thought of. The center screen between the two gauges is kind of basic to be honest with you and kind of disappointing when you're looking at what they're calling luxury. For technology, I gave it a seven. There are a lot of features in this car and some of the ones that I really like, like the wireless charging and some of the controls and plenty of storage. And they've really done a nice job thinking about everything that consumers would want. There are a lot of features, heated seats, which you can change and they're adjustable. You can pick three different levels, no air cooled seats, but that's not necessary. I mean, that's something that's in usually a higher price point vehicle, but having all this technology and all these great features, including, believe it or not, the buttons behind the steering wheel are plus and minus for volume on this side. The buttons on the left side are also plus and minus and that's for changing your presets. So that was well thought out. The adjustability for the head up display is here as well as some of the other controls. Really nice to have memory seats. Really appreciate if you've got more than one driver. They've really thought about a lot of things that consumers want, including if you live in an older house with a shorter garage or someplace where you can't put the tailgate up all the way. So there were a lot of features involved in this vehicle. I really think they did a nice job. So for features, I gave it a nine. When you're looking at quality, there's a lot of things to be qualified, not just the build quality and the outside build quality is great. There's is not a concern whatsoever, but I do have an issue with real stitching mixed with pictures of stitching because it makes the pictures of stitching stand out even more so. And that kind of impacts quality. You've got nice soft touch padding, which is in this category. And overall, the steering wheel and all that's great and the door panels and such. A lot of vinyl in this car. That's one thing you have to keep in mind. I don't particularly care for the piano black on the center stack. It's not really my favorite. I mean, I know that no matter what you have, if you touch the screen, you're gonna leave fingerprints naturally because of the oil. But as far as the quality of the build and the pieces and all the details is really well done. There's just a few misses. And when it comes to quality, you'd expect nothing but the best from Buick because it's just a step down from Cadillac and GM doesn't make crappy product. I'm not saying it's crappy, but if an average is five, this earns a seven. The design of the Buick Encore is improved. They've done a nice job making it more youthful, more sporty, and a luxurious look. I think consumers are gonna like this. This is really designed for a more youthful driver and of course, empty nesters because those are the type of people who are gonna to wanna to see some of these neat details. One of the worst details is this antenna. It is so, I don't know, 1980. I haven't seen one like this in a long time. They must be left in their warehouse. Very disappointing. You could do something really cool like they do on their other vehicles, like not even have that tail sticking up. Hiding the camera underneath the wing, great idea. They've done a nice job overall with the Buick Encore. One other design element that un is unbelievable to me is it looks like this is a tailpipe. It isn't, it's a false plate and it's on both sides. There is no exhaust pipe out the back. They wanted to give it that sportier look. So for overall for design with a few flaws, it got a seven. Going around the back side, there's a nice cover here that keeps your valuables safe. And of course, underneath here is a mini spear, which I do appreciate and room for your emergency kit. The storage space in back is about 23 and a half cubic feet. When you look at this vehicle versus the competitors as far as storage, other vehicles in this class, which I list them down below, have more storage. And when you're looking at value as a total, you're looking at the storage space, you're looking at the vehicle itself, what you're getting luxury wise, handling, performance, fuel economy, all the categories we've been talking about, it had a value score of six. The 2020 Buick Encore GX, this is the Essence trim, which has all the extra goodies on it that you would want, the LED, the turning headlights, all this, comes in between 24,000, which is the stripped down version, and all the way up to 30,000 if you put all the options on. Now, of course, we want all those options, so don't pay retail. There's always some sort of incentive or way to negotiate. If you're a current Buick customer, you love this brand, and you're loyal to it, there's a loyalty discount. If you're coming from a competing brand, there is a Conquest discount. It's not a lot of 
of money in this price point, but there is some money to be had, so don't leave that behind. When you're looking at the total score for this vehicle, there are some things that are important to note. It is lacking in some areas, especially in the performance. It's somewhere around average. The price seems a bit high considering what you're getting. If you're in that luxury spot, the price would be right, but then they should add more goodies. I love some of the goodies that they add in here as far as features that you don't see in some of the competitors, such as lumbar on the passenger side, but then they take away something else. But that's okay depending upon what your needs are. Because this is a very competitive category and we're comparing this Encore GX against other vehicles in this category, it got a total score of 69. And that doesn't mean this is a bad car. It's actually a pretty good score. It's above average, average would being 50. So make sure to test all the competitors. We've reviewed all of them. We like some of the other ones a little bit better. Take a look at the Mazda. There's some great value there as well. The Buick has really tried to step up their game and access some of that youthful buyer. And so if you're one of those youthful buyers, you shouldn't overlook it. Absolutely take it for a test drive. It might just fit everything that you need. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe. We give you some great information you will not get anywhere else, including a list of all the hidden incentives that you can get each month. We thank you for your support on our Patreon page. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Put your comments down below. If you bought an Encore, you love this vehicle. We want to know why. If you strayed from this vehicle and you bought something else, we're curious what you bought and why. Please put that down below. Let's start the conversation and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.